You know what you're watching, DS Learn Fares. Whoa! I'm here to discuss the reasons why I like to use a long to medium term perspective on my investments. Now, this ain't a dig at short term traders, so please, please, please don't give me daggers at the back of my head, okay? I'm just here to put my perspective on things. Before I get into the nitty gritty, I want to talk about the practicality first of each of these trading styles. So with short term traders, you're most active. So analyzing information, actually executing transactions during the live hours, the live trading hours. And so what that therefore means is that you need to be available during those live trading hours. And that may not always necessarily be the case because the trading hours last during typical working hours so basically if you've got a nine to five job yeah short-term trading is going to be difficult if you've got children to look after maybe like little toddlers to look after during that time then yeah trading is going to be difficult so like the practicality of it from a short-term trader is really really challenging especially when you have other commitments whereas with a long-term trader you don't necessarily have to be executing analyzing results within the trading hours you can simply just literally after you get home from your, from work after the trading hours are closed after you've looked after the kids you could just research about that company you've got much more time much more flexibility to research about that company and make a decision from there one of the key reasons why i like to use a medium to long-term approach on my investments is because of the phenomenon called compounding. Einstein called this the eighth wonder of the world for a very good reason, okay? And most of you probably know what compounding is. For those that don't know, it relies on two things, interest and also time. The whole concept of it is that you put in an initial amount of money, that money has a certain interest on it, and then it obviously increases in size. But then after a while, even that money that new bigger pile of money then has another sort of interest added on it and then increases even further. So given enough time of doing this, you can end up with hundreds, thousands times more than you initially put up. To be honest, it is actually unlimited your possibilities. And that's why compounding is so important. So with the fact that you're doing long-term and medium-term approaches, what you're actually saying is, look, I'm giving this investment time to build. It may be a slow burner, but eventually, as you guys can tell, compounding will be will have a significant effect. You're basically maximizing the amount of compounding that that investment can do. Whereas a short term trader wouldn't be able to benefit from that necessarily. If you guys want to find out more on compounding and if you just want to check out more of my videos, because, yeah, you, you know, you do. Yeah, I've, I've done the video on compounding. So, yeah, check it out here. But yeah, cool, sweet, dude. Another thing to note is the temperament you have to have to be a short-term trader. Now, you know how I talk about being able to control your emotions in the stock market? That's a given. As a short-term trader, yeah, you literally take that to the next level a short-term trader has to really be able to control their emotions be decisive at the key right times and also be able to not give in to public perception on things because the market is so volatile when you're looking at a short-term time frame it can take investors years to get the hang of this let alone like master it and that brings me on to my other point which is a ultimately the share price. So obviously you guys know it, I know it. the share price is movement is what makes us basically make money when we sell. So when you actually look at a short term time frame, so like a day, weeks, months of a particular stock, you'll notice that it's got a lot more volatility compared to the long term time frame. And that's another reason why I like to use the long-term approach. For example, McDonald's is the biggest food franchise in the world. Yeah, it's undisputable. And gives investors a lot of confidence that they'll keep doing well in the future. But, check this out. Looking at the share price movement on a daily basis, you can see just how volatile it is to be a short-term trader. There are lots of dips and there are lots of peaks all occurring right next to each other day after day after day 
And when you also look at the weekly and monthly basis, you can see that not much has changed because the time frame is quite small. This is why you really need to be able to be at the pinnacle, the pinnacle of your game. You have to be able to deal with these fluctuations. Yes, you can potentially make tons of money utilizing the volatile share price, but it is so much easier to get things wrong and lose a ton of money. But Check this out when you look at McDonald's in a long term perspective. You can see that the ride seems to be much more positive, i.e. the share price is going up as time progresses and also a smoother ride. And it's because you're given enough time, enough time for that particular stock to rebalance itself. Granted, this isn't going to be the case for all of the stocks available in the market because simply some stocks are trash, but um, <laughs> yeah, whereas others are really good. But when you look at the conventional way, the fundamentals of investing, it's basically buying low and selling high. So you want to find the companies that are basically undervalued and find that diamond in the dirt and then hold out in the future for it to become a really big winner. This is why I like to use a long to medium term trading approach because it gives it sufficient amount of time for it to become that big winner. Remember, if the company's making profit, why do you want to cut that short? You want to continue it for as long as possible. Just to throw in a little disclaimer, this is the conventional way of investing. Yes, we all know that, but we're in 2018 now, and this isn't the only way. And some of the other methods that are used to make money actually might benefit a short-term trader compared to a long to medium term trader. For example, short selling, that method relies on the price actually going down. So yes, when you look at, back at that one day axis for McDonald's, that dip would be a perfect opportunity for a short term trader to make money from. And don't think that just because I'm a long term, medium term investor means that I have to stick by that. No, it doesn't, okay? Sometimes I can play the field. Sometimes I can sit on the fence. Got a problem with that. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you may want to incorporate short-term trading characteristics. For example, if you've invested in a stock and it turns into a bad stock, a salty stock that leaves a bad taste in your mouth, then you will want to, well, want to, I definitely will exit the trade. Like absolutely exit pronto, I'm out, like delete. And this is very, very similar to a short-term trader who's always looking for the next investments, exiting and entering transactions. Whereas if I'm onto a big winner, then why would you want to cut your losses short? No, that's, that's not what I want to do. I would much rather keep that company, let it keep making me money. This is why I tend to use a long to medium term approach with my investments. But, but, but I do call upon the other short term approach when need be. It's your favorite YouTuber, guys, Dami Solaru. I talk about stock market investments. I talk about property investments, financial management too. Giving you that consistent content, you know? Before you continue, what are you gonna do for the rest of the day? Yeah, say it with me. Like, subscribe, and share. Share me. DS Learning Finance. Whoa. Bye.